I've had quite a bit of interest in the slipstream project so I'm going to show you how I built it. Now just a quick health warning before I start. If you're going to try and build something like this obviously you're going to be messing around with mains electricity and uh, if you get something wrong you could kill yourself. Or I should also say I've got no qualifications or experience really in electronics or electrical engineering so if you copy anything I do it's at your own risk. I strongly suggest you get one of these things. This is a residual current device or RCD. If you plug this um, in between your kit and the main supply you've got a lot better chance of not dying if you screw up. Right so that's the lecture. Let's have a look at the box. Now this is obviously a prototype of sorts which is why it's the size of a milk crate. We've got a mains lead here, an aperture in the top for the USB cable and a couple of AC sockets on the front. These are just regular flush mount sockets and this is where you plug in the two fans. You can use any regular domestic fans and uh, for this particular box this shouldn't be rated any higher than 45 watts. I'm talking about mains powered fans and the design of this box makes one assumption which is that the speed of the fan varies in proportion to the voltage applied. I'm in the UK so mains powers at 240 volts AC. So at 240 volts the fan spins at maximum speed, at 120 volts it's roughly half speed and so on. Obviously if your main supply is different then the details of what follows will need to be different. So what's inside the box? Okay these two big black things are step up transformers, they're part of the output stage and I'll talk about them a bit later. But for now they're just blocking the view so I'm going to take them out. So now you can see we've got three circuit boards in here. The first one's a USB interface card. I've got another one here so you can have a better look. This one's actually dead. I fried it in my first attempt at this project. I'll say more about that later. So this card's made by a company called Velleman. I think that's a Belgian company. And it's sold in the UK by Maplin. You can buy it as a kit for £30 or as an assembled product for £40. This board plugs into a USB port and takes its power from there. And it's got all sorts of useful inputs and outputs. What's useful for our purposes is uh, it has two digital to analog converters. And what that means is we can set a value inside a computer program and one of these outputs will be set to a DC voltage in proportion to that value. I'm going to say more about the programming side later but these are 8-bit D2A converters so that means we've got 256 possible voltages on the output. The output varies between 0 and 5 volts DC so in a nutshell that means we can under software control output a signal between 0 and 5 volts and uh, we can control it in increments of about a 50th of a volt and uh, we can do this course independently for two separate outputs which is convenient since we want two fans. Now then 5 volts DC isn't going to run our fans which work in AC at much higher voltages and uh, obviously we need much more power than a USB port can provide. So we're going to use these outputs as signals to control some other bits of hardware that drive the fans. That's what the other two boards are in the box. These are two identical boards, one for each fan. These are made by Seebeck and sold in the UK by a company called Quasar Electronics. They're not cheap. I think these were £65 each. They're actually the only suitable controllers I could find. Now these controllers do almost exactly what we need. They'll take a 240 volt AC main supply and send it to an output but varying the voltage according to the setting of a DC signal input. Two things to say about these controllers. This company makes a range of similar controllers and here's another one of them. This is a lot smaller but that's mainly because it's rated for a much lower power than the ones in the box. This one's for I think 750 watts and the ones I've used are rated at 2500 watts so in theory we could drive some pretty big fans. However the main difference is that uh, this one doesn't have the DC circuit electrically isolated from the main circuit. What does that mean? Well take it from me it's bad. This one's dead and uh, it got fried alongside the USB card I showed you and the USB controller on my PC. So you need to make sure that you get the controller with the main circuit electrically isolated from the control circuit. Now the other problem is these cards need a control signal that varies between 0 and 10 volts DC. Unfortunately this is not what we get from the USB card. We get uh, if you remember 0 to 5 volts DC. So we're left with a design that allows us to control the fan over half its range and that's exactly what we do. So these controllers only ever output a maximum of about 120 volts not the full 240 volts supplied. And that's where the two bricks come in. These are step up transformers. They're intended for running European 240 volt appliances in the United States where the mains voltage is 110 volts. Very convenient, we feed the output of our fan controller to one of these and it scales it up um, by a factor of two, more or less. In other words, the controller output varies between 0 and 120 volts and the transformer scales it up to between 0 and 240 volts, which is just what we need. 
Uh, these adapters are cheap, they were about between six and eight pounds each, you got these off Amazon. Uh, they are limited to 45 watts, which is pretty much uh, enough for most domestic fans. And that's really it for the hardware, everything else in here is just wiring, plugging the various bits together, trying to make it as tidy as possible. On the software side, there's two things we need to do. First, we need a way of driving the USB card, and uh, that's supplied as a library of functions that comes on a CD-ROM with the card, uh, packaged up as a DLL. The other thing we need to do is to read the status of the turn coordinator ball, and that's available through the SIM Connect interface as a variable. The best way to figure this out is to look at the SIM Connect sample programs, which uh, are part of the FSX SDK. You need to install the SDK from the FSX disk, the samples are written in C++ and you can use Visual Studio 10 Express to compile them. This is available for free from Microsoft. Now if you have no experience of programming or of addressing complex APIs, you're going to find this hard work. Um, but for this project you can really get away with minimal programming. My experiments are based on modifying the read data sample program. And that's it, I'm still playing with the software. Uh, next job's to add a third fan at the front, giving us the main snip stream. I'll need another interface card and a, another fan controller for that, obviously. So that's it really, yeah, it should be interesting to see how that adds to the approach and landing. So stay tuned, look out for a component list coming up right now.